Okay, and it is about the rise of blockchain cities. If if you've heard about blockchain, you're involved with it or not, but and you or and or if you're still confused about it, well, you're in the right place because blockchain as a technology is still evolving. There's many questions about it that hey, why does it do this? Why does it do that? You know, is cryptocurrency blockchain? Is Bitcoin blockchain? There's a lot of noise out there. Uh, and I think it's our moral obligation as technologists to, uh, and I was talking to you, uh, Dr. Shirin, here earlier, that it's our moral obligation to help understand what this confusion is. Generally speaking, Bitcoin and blockchain are expanding really, really rapidly as a technology. Uh, starting from the US to, to Canada, Asia, India, if you do a little bit of research, you'll find thousands and thousands of companies who are doing something or the other relating to blockchain. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into detail with the, the nuts and bolts of blockchain, but essentially, it's a database technology. It's how you share information, how you capture information. Uh, and why it's different from traditional databases is because it offers some new mechanisms, some new ways of storing that information. It cannot be stolen, it cannot be deleted, and so on. So it's really uh, something new that's, uh, that everybody's uh, noticing. Uh, there's uh, tons of blockchain initiatives across the world from every single country that you can think within governments, within the private sector, within the automobile industry, within every single industry that you can think of, from healthcare to exporting coffee beans to, uh, to shipping beef from Australia to the US, everything uses blockchain. And you might say, why, do, why is that? Why is everybody using blockchain? Uh, and the example is, why is everybody using computers? Why is everybody using a cell phone? It is a technology that can be uh, used with, with many different things because at the end, it's a way of storing information. It's a database technology. Use cases of blockchain go from, again, as I said, from exporting coffee and tracing the origin of coffee and making sure, hey, this coffee originated from this mountain in Costa Rica. And when you have the same coffee available at one of your stores, as a consumer, you could just scan a barcode and have a proof that this coffee actually originates from that area. Within the beef export industry, you can, um, you know, in your supermarket, scan uh, a piece of beef, a steak that you want to have, and it'll tell you the origin, and it'll be guaranteed that it is from that place. So when you look at things such as Kobe beef, which is a very special type of beef that's, uh, that's uh, comes from uh, cattle in Japan. They're raised in, at a certain altitude. These cows have to be from a certain um, specific family of, of cows and beef. Then it becomes very specific. And so if I spend 100 or 200 euros on buying that beef, I want to make sure this is Kobe beef, that nobody you know, reared it in some other country. I really want to make sure, and that's what's changing things. The fact that people want to have a choice, and they really want to be in control of what they, what they consume, what they, as a service or as a product, is giving rise to this movement. You'll have a copy of all these, all these uh, slides later on. And so, because blockchain is uh, so big, and it's so interesting, and so confusing, uh, it really drove me uh, earlier this year to say, hey, there's a lot of confusion out there. I really want to change this somehow. And I decided to shoot a documentary film called Blockchain City. And Blockchain City is about the story of different cities around the world, different governments, and their take on blockchain. Why are they investing in blockchain? Why are they spending millions on blockchain? And so that film is, uh, is coming out. Uh, in April uh, next year, we did a lot of filming on it, did some, a lot of research, and we interviewed some key figures within different governments to ask them about what their take was. So I'll tell you what we did. So we went to uh, your neighbors uh, here in Estonia, a really awesome country. I know there was somebody here from Tallinn as well. And I talked with their, um, with their uh, side of government uh, that does e-residency. 
If you know anything about Estonia, you know they have a really solid e-residency program. You can become an e-resident, you can access government services, you can do digital signatures, and it's beyond that. It's much more than that. It's not just about e-signatures, but it's about having a digital identity that's connected to, uh, to, let's say, government. So you don't have to be there physically doing all these signatures. So we interviewed uh, Ott Water, who's their director of e-residency, and asked him, hey, why do you do this? And we got the answers from him. Uh, and so all those answers and his interview is in the film. Uh, we had a few speakers from uh, the Netherlands, and uh, we had to interview somebody from the Netherlands because they have something called the Dutch Blockchain Coalition. The Dutch Blockchain Coalition is doing projects within, uh, within different countries. They have tied up with governments of Singapore, Canada, US, and they're doing a lot of good projects at really solving global problems, problems that uh, we're not looking at. They're doing work with the UN and so on and so forth, really not saying, hey, this is a commercial project, but can we actually implement this across different fields? And that's what they're doing. So we wanted to capture those insights and talk to them. So I spoke with um, Marlo Pomp, who is the head of blockchain uh, for the government of uh, the Netherlands and asked her, why are you really investing in blockchain? What is in it uh, for you and for us? And her insights are incredible. I then went to really chasing people. I was chasing people. I ended up in Zug in, in Switzerland and um, spoke with two, two key people. One was the mayor of Zug. And uh, I spoke to the mayor of Zug because Zug uh, for two reasons. First of all, this uh, it's a beautiful place, half an hour from Zurich, and um, Zug is the first municipality in the world that did voting on blockchain. It was also the first municipality in the world that accepted Bitcoin as a form of payment, just for experimentation. They really wanted to do it and figure out, hey, What's all this Bitcoin? Let's, let's see if we can transact with it. What's this Bitcoin and blockchain? Let's do voting rights through it. And these are incredible steps. Because imagine what can happen in the world if these projects are successful and democracies that are you know, in Africa, in Asia, and many of the countries where there's no true democracies, it can literally change the fate of millions of people that there's complete transparency in voting, there's complete transparency in many other things. So we spoke to him, and he gave us some insights. We also went to, we spoke to Dubai with Dr. Aisha bin Bisher. She's the head of the entire implementation of blockchain within Dubai government. So as a goal, the Dubai government has said that we will have all the transactions within government on blockchain by the year 2020, 2021. They want to have everything on blockchain, and it's a very aggressive project. Nobody else is doing it at a government level. So we really wanted to know from them, hey, why are you guys doing this? Are you, are you crazy? This is something new. But they have a, they have a plan, and they want to prove, prove it right. They really want to offer these services to uh, their citizens and say, hey, there's complete transparency here and efficiency and so on. Uh, the amount of efficiency they're going to have is incredible. It's going to save them thousands and millions of hours of work that they do traditionally. They're printing documents, they're using a lot of documentation. It's just going to eliminate all of that. And so they're going to do passport control, permit issue permits, city service permits, cybersecurity, banking contracts, all of that at a government level is going to be on, on, on blockchain. So something to watch out for. Uh, I also spoke with uh, Joe Lubin, who's the co-founder of the Ethereum blockchain. So you've probably heard about Ether or Ethereum and Bitcoin. These are two predominantly large public blockchain networks. He's considered to be one of the founders of, of the technology. It's a big, big deal. Uh, and so I asked him, what, what's the reason why blockchain is, is incredibly famous right now? And, and how can I use it? Can I touch it? Can I feel it? And he said 99.9% .9 of everyday people will never know that blockchain is running a system. 
they will never touch it, they will never see it, because it runs behind the scenes. It's not something that appears on my computer when something you know, is utilizing blockchain. So there's that confusion we need to remove. That blockchain is a very technical uh, technology that's, that's not our, like our cell phone that we will see it. It runs in the background. Uh, technicians, database experts will use it, but not everyday people will use it on the face of it, but yes, it might power many different things at the back end. I also spoke with uh, Professor Roman Beck, who's the chairman at the European Blockchain Center in, um, in Copenhagen. And he told us, he gave us a European perspective on blockchain and what it's doing within, uh, within Europe. Uh, another person, Dr. Larry Sanger, and I'm telling you this list is finishing in one more slide. Dr. Larry Sanger, who's the co-founder of Wikipedia, really considered to be somebody very influential when it comes to uh, information sharing and you know, the rights of information, the privacy rights. And so he has some great insights in the film. Last but not least, uh, I spoke with Imogen Heap, who's a Grammy Award winner, and uh, she's co-founder of a newer technology or a product called Mycelia, which, is, which helps artists get paid for their work, because a lot of privacy today is wiping out millions of dollars from the earnings that artists should have, right? They produce music, they do creative work, but uh, we, we download it from the internet, or somebody downloads it, and they lose all that money. It's their income. So she's, got a, she's working on a project that's blockchain-based, and it'll potentially help uh, change that industry. And so all of these people are in the film. Uh, I am the host on the film, and the film is coming out in uh, April 20, uh, 2019, and hopefully we'll be potentially be able to show it here in Finland as well uh, next year at, at some of the events. And so that's, that's the film, and it's not about the film. It's about the idea. I really believe that blockchain technology will uh, power the cities of tomorrow. It's, uh, it's a technology that you all need to go out and learn about. If you don't know anything about it, that's great. Go out and read about it and figure out how can it help you do things better. And if you don't understand it, then meet people uh, who can help you do that. But this is one technology that you absolutely want to understand. So, so please do that. I can play a quick trailer, and we can see what this film looks like so far, and it's just a trailer, so. No popcorn, sorry. Something isn't right in economic, social, and political systems, especially on the, the financial side of things. Why I should wait like for days or months to buy a house? Why it's not only like a matter of pressing a button? Blockchain is gonna help me become more me. In the next decade or so, a majority of progressive large and small cities will run on blockchain technology. The world is moving to a space where most of the economic activity is limited by few. With the promise of blockchain, kind of many people argue that there is no need for trusting anymore because there is certainty. Radically decentralizes decision making. My journey to find out why some key cities around the world want to break the mold and take a step that nobody else has taken before took me on a journey to ask this key question from those who knew best. Blockchain and Swiss democracy is a kind of brother and sister. You can't only read about blockchain, you must also start these small experiments. Estonia kind of had blockchain databases before uh, the term blockchain was coined. Blockchain City is a quest to find the truth, to uncover the story of the potential of technology to save humanity, and to help understand how to best shape a future that we can all look forward to. And so that's happening, it'll be out soon, and I will let you guys know when it's out. Uh, tons of partners have signed up. I have run out of roles in the film, so I'm sorry I cannot cast anybody. But 
if your organization wants to get involved, we're still taking on partners, and you can be a production partner, be in front of uh, 20 million people throughout the next 12 months. So there's that opportunity uh, that we have. But uh, the, 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 the response so far has been incredible. Uh, in terms of launch and release, we will, um, we're planning to be at between 30 to 50 different uh, technology industry events next year. So we have a huge schedule ahead of us. We'll launch on uh, some of the online platforms. And, uh, and we'll potentially also be at some, uh, some film festivals. So that's what's happening next year. I really want to conclude this entire conference by, by, by just saying a couple of things. First of all, I think it's been uh, a lot of different conversations here, a lot of content that you guys have been part of this year, uh, from you know, cybersecurity to uh, you know, designing next cities and, and how to make them work. Uh, I also talked about revolutions in my, in my previous session that, you know, uh, no matter what you do, there's some kind of a revolution uh, that we're, we're living in, whether it's uh, the older revolutions and the revolutionaries we saw, or the, the future revolutions and the toilet that I showed you. Uh, but there's a revolution happening no matter what you do. Fourth Industrial Revolution, Fifth Industrial Revolution, uh, I personally believe that we are truly living in an era of uh, something big, and we have to make a choice. The choice is, what do we stand for? You know, what is it that you want from your life? And literally, this is, uh, this is Life 101, is do you want financial success? Do you want career success? Do you want your organization to grow, your institute, your company? You have to figure out what you really want, because a majority of us don't know what we want. We just live life on an everyday basis, and we continue to, to do all those things on a daily basis. But take a step back when you, when you, when you go back home, you take your time out, and think about what you need from life. Because right now, in the world of emerging technology, you can have whatever you want, but you have to have a clear goal. And I believe that if you're part of something larger or you create something on your own, you have a greater chance of success. I call it uh, you know, uh, the fact that the future will be driven by people who are fanatic in their purpose. You have to go crazy. You have to believe in yourself so much that it drives every single day of you. And Create a revolution, you know, stand for something big and crazy and, and obnoxious and you will succeed. And if you can't do that, then you meet people and join people and join companies who are crazy and you think they will change the world. And unless you don't do that, unless there's that fire is not there, you will not succeed. But I have great hope for you, and I'm wishing you all the best until next year. So keep it strong and, and be part of something big, or create something big. Thank you so much for your time. I love you guys. It's been great having you here, and um, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Mom's spaghetti, he's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready to drop palms. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud, he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking how? Everybody's choking.